welcome back to another Real Talk Reaction. This one's for The Office, Season 5, Episode 11. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell as well. Tell a friend to tell a friend that the algorithm is true. All right, a couple comments from the last episode, starting with executive producer JoJo, who says, Yes, Meredith is an alcoholic. However, Michael was the one who plied her with every kind of liquor until she got so drunk she set her hair on fire. Also, Phyllis is another kind of fire when she just blurts that out. Don't mess with Phyllis. Mm. Yeah, I feel like Phyllis snapped. She was yeah. like... <laughs> Alright, uh, executive producer E says, I really love how Kate Flannery, who plays Meredith, does her own stunts. I'm sure that the wig was mm. fake and she had on a protective skull cap for the fire stunt, but it's so impressive knowing it was her who did that. That just goes to show how much I love the character. I think that Daryl got the surprise his daughter, got that to surprise his daughter, who is either called Jayla or Jada, I think the latter, who is Daryl's daughter. She was only mentioned twice before when Michael asked Daryl how he felt when he became a baby daddy and during a scene with Kelly when he said he couldn't go out with her right that night because he had plans to read Charlotte's Web to his daughter. Mm -hmm. Kelly challenges him with it's either me or your daughter and without hesitation Daryl says my daughter. I totally have forgotten that he had a daughter. <laughs> yeah. uh, since Daryl works in the <coughs> warehouse, Jada wasn't shown in Bring Your Daughter to Work Day but she makes at least a couple appearances later on in the show. So in short, I think he was getting the Princess Unicorn to surprise Jada. With it not that he himself is a collector. Great reaction to an out-of-the-season episode, but hey, any holiday episode beats season twos. Oh. Uh, Monica comes through to say, We can all agree Angela deserved how Phyllis was treating her in this episode. I just wish it was under different circumstances. Unless I missed something in the earlier seasons, no one was forcing Phyllis to be on the party planning committee, and she could have quit at any time. Yeah. Also, I get Phyllis is trying to get back at Angela, but she sits right next to Andy every day. You would think she would tell Andy the truth, then hold it over Angela's head just to be the head of the party committee. Um, sorry, lots of comments, so I had to split these up. Alright, then Dimwit says, The Daryl and Toby Princess Unicorn transaction was comedic gold. Both Craig Robinson and Paul Lieberstein performed the scene remarkably well, but Daryl absolutely did Toby dirty. Yeah. Children with their active imaginations want to see themselves in their heroes, since modern toy manufactured mass media, print, and electronic have been industrialized for the better part of the last 200 years. In Eurocentric societies, this was virtually impossible for non-white children. There were hardly any dolls, literary characters, or heroes, both real and imagined, in the zeitgeist that weren't Caucasian. It has been noted by many advocates that this type of invisibility under representation is both hurtful and harmful, so over the last approximately 50 years, general society and capitalism have begun to correct this imbalance, and things like the Black Princess Unicorn, Asian superheroes, and women Ghostbusters are now available and commonplace. Yeah. Uh, but Toby's daughter also wants to look like Princess Unicorn, and so yes, Toby sees color. We all do in self-reflection. -re that take by RJ just irked me a little. So we, the audience, were set up along with Toby. It's shown how excited Toby's daughter was when he mentioned Princess Unicorn. But I feel like... I feel like that's more representation of Toby's I mean, insecurities versus his daughter's. I mean, big dog, that was a deep... A deep explanation of a of a joke of a comedy yeah. joke. You, we all know why they wrote it and set it up that way, and it it was pulled off brilliantly. Yeah, and it worked. It worked for sure. We know Toby. I mean, how do how does Toby not or how does Toby know that his daughter didn't want the black princess? Yeah, you know, Toby like, just he's just assuming. It's, it's based on his yeah. perception. He's assuming that hey, it's not the way I see on the Like commercial. I said, I think it's more reflective of the parent than it is of the of the yeah. child. Yeah, because he probably wouldn't give that. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Uh, it's sh it's shown how excited Toby's daughter was when he mentioned Princess Unicorn. We were yeah. we were told how much Toby wanted to one of his ex wife with his daughter for once. Toby doesn't get many wins in his life anyway. He literally grovels to convince yeah, Daryl to sell him the last doll. Daryl knows what he's holding. He knows it might not be the ideal product for Toby's daughter. <laughs> Instead of giving Toby a heads up and letting him make an informed yeah. decision, Daryl gouges him on price and then asks him a question that Toby cannot possibly answer sincerely. Yeah. Again, I think that's just all oh, like with Toby. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was a hilarious scene, and so that makes it worth out worthwhile, but it feels unjustified. Both Toby and Daryl are written as generally decent people who wouldn't go out of the way to be unkind. Daryl doesn't seem to have that trait of casual cruelty that Dwight or Angela possess. Furthermore, Toby doesn't deserve it. It's bad enough he feels forced to tolerate Michael's irrational yeah. abuse. I will say, though, too, 
Toby waited to the last that's minute. About to say, the, you talk about he don't deserve it. He deserved it because yeah, he, he waited he had the last all minute. day to get the Or Why wait yeah. until today? As soon as fucking Dwight told you, I got like fifty dollars of it. Hey, let me get one of them dollars. Right. No, he <laughs> wants the old classic Toby and um, wait until the end. Furthermore, Toby doesn't deserve it. It's bad enough he feels forced to tolerate Michael's irrational right. abuse. But Michael is an incompetent buffoon who's been mocked his entire life and finally found someone he can bully. Daryl is shown as both smart, capable, and emotionally aware. This yeah. was not his best moment. I mean, Toby definitely goes toe to toe and pisses off Michael too. Oh, yeah, though. yeah. Oh, so, yeah. You live and you learn. Um, I believe Michael when he said that he could drive <laughs> Mer to, Meredith to hit her rock bottom because, as he said, he did it to Jan. Uh, Monica adds, "I very much disagree." Dis so agree with you on the Toby and Daryl situation. As a black woman, I grew up playing with white dolls, uh, Barbies for years. Uh oh. You and Toby. What's the conversation we got going on over you here. You and Toby are assuming that she wouldn't like the Barbies because it was black. Daryl didn't have to ask Toby if his daughter would be comfortable with a non-white doll. Also, the question already has been asked: Why did Toby wait so long to get a doll for his daughter? If Daryl had said no, it would have been his fault after telling his daughter about the doll before he even yes. bought it. Yes. 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 Um, all right, last, you live and you learn. last comment is from Walid, who says, I have to give it to Phyllis because as a uh, Moroccan, that party was really well planned and it had a lot of stuff from Moroccan culture. Yeah, she did From the job. music to the tea and the musical instruments. Yeah. Hey, thanks for commenting yeah. and like reflect. I thought it was great too, but I would have no insight. So it's cool to see someone else comment that uh, yeah. can, can identify how well that was off. Was that the Yeah, we come a storm. Um, all right, great comments, and you know, we got a little deep. Uh, let's get to the next episode of The Office right now. Here's a brand. Thunder Mifflin, this is Pam. I'm sorry he's not in yet. Would you like his voicemail? Yeah! 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 Okay. 12 miles an hour. Ain't that cold, Louis? Angela made several 911 calls about cars going too fast in front of the building, so the police put up a radar gun. It's actually caused a bit of a traffic hazard. No! 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 There was wind. I was just jogging. Flight. There was wind. I wanted. There was wind. It's not your turn. This wind helping you go faster. Oscar, go ahead. Oh, I'm not trying. Here we go. You were running with the car. car. I was ahead of the car. 31 is my new number. 31 is here. Dwight. That's been 17 days. Oh my. Wait, is there a signal? What is it? You've got to tell Annie about us. That is a terrible idea. It's one of your worst. Get it over with. Then we don't have to hide anymore. You're expanding on your worst idea. Do you love me or not? I've already admitted that I do. Why do you keep making me repeat it? Because you're engaged to Andy. Yeah, Michael's being totally chill. Not yet. When? When what? <clears throat> Michael's when what? He gonna tell me. You know this can't go on. What can't go on? We have to put an end to this. It seems like come on. You guys should be hearing what I'm saying. This is really not how this is supposed to happen. Angela said she was gonna tell him. She's just not ready. When will she be ready? I don't know. Is she crazy in bed? Yeah, stop. How what? Stop okay, let's not so specific. This shouldn't happen at work. <laughs> and really? yeah, should be as as possible. we should also consider the fact that that man has an anger issue. Too late. Well, it's not too late because you haven't done anything. I am already walking. Michael, Where's he going? once this gets out, I don't know how it's going to go down. Okay, what does that mean? I get ugly. <sighs> Jim. I, I'm not very articulate today, so... I'll just leave it for another time. Another day. Alrighty. She'll be fine. Yeah, there it is. Off. Have a good meeting. Thank you. Kick Wallace's ass. Okay. I will. Wait, these guys just. Brian and Angela are having an affair, so. I can't hear you through the glass. Dwight and Angela are having an affair. They're, they've been sleeping together for some time. That was the news. Oh, I'm you know. What? All right. Info bomb. See you later. Uh, Alright. Are you serious? Yep. Yep. Here we go leave because I don't want to see how this. What 
What have you heard? That you're sleeping with Dwight. That doesn't sound like me. Is it true? Andy, I'm <laughs> That doesn't you. sound like me. I mean, we just signed off on our wedding <laughs> 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 Oh, shit. I will respect the results of the duel. Of course you will. Any bad points, you just Kevin. say Kevin. words. Tell him nothing. Is that a tweed jacket? And he looks at me and he says, Michael, yes, it is a tweed jacket. And I look back at him and I say, I feel the need. For the need for tweed. It's hard to try and evaluate yourself, Michael, but I appreciate you trying. And thanks for coming in. Oh, thank you. Yes. I have to say, I am so impressed with the potential you see in me. Nope, we can leave now. Yeah, finish it. Yeah, finish it. Come on! Where are you? Yeah, 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 finish Let's it. Do this thing! Come on! Come on out! I can't believe they're gonna fight over me. I guess people have fewer choices as they get older. Come on, choices. <laughs> Fewer choices. Has anything happened yet? Mm -hmm. It's 4-10. I don't think he's going to show. Oh, come on, man. Believe in something. Come on, coward! Where are you? Where? It's a shit fucker. Yeah, like, how is this going to resolve that? Oh my god. Alright, that was episode 511 of The Office, and the time has come, it looks like. Um, it played out a little differently than I thought it was going to play out, but it, it still played out about how it should have played out right there. Um, I'm glad Michael was the one that's just like, fuck it, I'm going to go and tell you, I'll keep playing around with it. Uh, Angela still seems a bit mental, though, because she still was playing to both sides, still kind of getting a little happy. With them fighting over her, all that, so she's a little, she's a little off her rocker a little bit, which um, I hope that they both, yeah, stop messing with her. That it seems like it looks like it's gonna be, but you know, time will tell. I feel bad for Andy, um, but I'm glad he finally knows mm -hmm. now, so he can go ahead and move on and deal with the way he got to deal with. It. I don't know how this is gonna shape the office though moving forward, because that was a big blow, um, right there, and but. On the bright side, they are one of the top offices out of the company. So, I mean, kudos to them. They still find a way to get it done and make them sales. Um, but I thought it was an entertaining episode. Um, it was coming. I didn't know when they was going to finally do it, but it has finally happened. And I think now we can turn the page and, you know, maybe get back to some more shenanigans. But this will probably have some repercussions down the line. Can't wait to see the next one. Oh, I'm so glad it's all out in the open, though. Like, I'm just glad it's done. It didn't It didn't play out exactly how I thought it was going to either, um, but I'm glad it feels like towards the end it's resolved and they both recognize, like, something isn't working out here. I'm glad Andy seemingly is cutting it off. Um, I don't know how long Dwight is, but I think, you know, Dwight's feelings was, were hurt to a certain extent, too. Um, Angela just looks like the bad guy. Like, that's just what it is here. So we'll have to see if the, she, they're able to redeem her character in any way. But uh, at, she was super frustrating in this episode, too. Yeah. So I don't know. She's she's not getting a lot, of, a lot of W's in that sense. So we'll have to see it play out. But I loved everything about Michael. I liked... I knew exactly how Michael was going to tell Andy. I, I like that it was Michael, too, because it makes sense that it was his character. He did wait 17 days before he said something, though, so that that took a lot on Michael's end not to say something before that point. But because of the setup, knowing he was going to leave the office and not have to see the confrontation, it was perfectly set up for him to yep. just tell him and bounce. So I thought that was well written as far as who told Andy. Um, and then I, I like the fact that, like, uh, his office is being recognized as the top seller, which we know Michael's able to do, but the fact that Michael could not articulate any of his methods <laughs> or anything about how he manages his office was, a, again, uh, a, a, a great uh, reflection of Michael. I loved his line, too, that he's like, sometimes I just start a sentence, and I hope some way through I'm going to get to my point, but yeah. and he just could not get to that <laughs> point. So I really liked everything about Michael this episode, um, and glad... 
again, uh, everything's out in the open. Yep. So now I'm interested in just seeing how this plays out from this point forward. Yep. All right. Well, look, thank you guys again for watching another Real Talk Reaction for the Office Season 5, Episode 11. And until next time, people, peace.